Hi there, I'm Alex, and I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful sailboat. You can see it's got a little cabin on it. There's a mast that's made out of a dowel, and the hull itself with a beautifully rounded bow. These are the materials that we'll be using. We're gonna use a piece of one by four pine. You can see I've got some nails taped to it here. We'll use those nails as well. That's, that will be for the hull. We have a quarter inch dowel for the mast. We have a piece of one by two for the cabin, and I've drilled some holes in it already with a very tiny drill bit so that it will be easy to do the nailing. And we have some sails that are already cut out. The tools that we will be using. We'll start with the simplest, a ruler and a pencil. We'll also use a tray square to do some line drawing. We'll use a C-clamp and a little block of wood to protect our boat called a clamping block when we do our sawing and we use a rasp. For the sawing, we will use an 11 tooth handsaw, ideal for adults and children alike. We'll be using a rasp like this. This is called a Shinto rasp. You'll hear me call it an alligator. That's because it's easier to remember that way. It has lots of teeth just like an alligator, so we're gonna be very careful with it. We'll be using a drill, in this case a hand drill. Looks just like this with a quarter inch drill bit in it. We'll be using a sanding block. It might look like this one here, or it might look like this one here. We'll be using a miter box with a back saw in it to cut that little cabin. And we'll be nailing it all together with a hammer. And you'll notice that there is a board here that's kind of beat up. That's for starting our nails with. So lots of tools to make a little project. It's gonna be a great experience for children and adults working together. I want to give you a few tips before we get started with the construction. I want you to remember that you can watch this video multiple times. So I'm not going to be repeating things many times, but if you find something is confusing, just rewind and play it again. Secondly, I recommend that you watch it together, adults and children. For the adults, I'll be showing you techniques for using tools together with the child that you're working with so that you're not doing the work for that child. And for the children, I will be showing you ways to use the tools independently so you don't need anyone's help at all. So watch them together. Feel free to watch it again and again if you need to. If you want more specific guidance on any particular tool, I will give you the address to my website at the end of this video so that you can see tool specific videos that I have posted on that website. Ready? Let's get started. Let's start with the hull of the sailboat. We need to know how long it is. So we'll match up our ruler here. It's kind of hard to match it up on the end, but don't worry, I'm measuring it with you and for you right now. And we'll come over, we'll take a good long look. You'll notice this ruler only has quarter inch increments. That makes it much easier for children to use, especially when they're really young. And I'm gonna look at where the line on the ruler is closest to the end of the boat, to the stern of the boat. And I see it's right next to this long line, next to the number seven. This boat is about seven inches long. So now we can take our piece of one by four that we're gonna make the hull out of. Let's take off this tape with the nails. We don't need it any longer. We'll put it over here on the table out of the way. And we're going to measure seven inches on the one by four. I do this by matching my finger up with the end of the wood and the ruler and I push them together. If you're the adult doing this with a child, it really helps if you have positioned their finger right there at the end and push the ruler back and forth until they can feel them matching up exactly like one piece of wood. Then if you help them guide their hand to hold the ruler steady, they can make the dot at seven inches and just make a dot. Don't make a line or a scribble. Just take the pencil, put it next to the mark on the ruler, push and twist. I put a circle around this dot. I recommend that the child do that. So if you're the kid, put a circle around the dot you just made and let's just double check. We'll match up the ruler. That dot is at seven inches. We've got a circle around it so we don't lose it on the wood. And now we're ready to draw a line across the wood. For that, we will use a tri-square. The tri-square looks like a simple tool, but actually can be quite complex. The tri-square works by being positioned up against the wood here and matched up to the dot so we can draw our line straight across the wood. That's tricky for small hands to do. So here's what I recommend. Curl your fingers onto the tri-square as close to the wood as you can make it. This tri-square has a very convenient 
corner right here. Most tray squares have a place where you can curl your fingers. So I tell children to curl their fingers like a cat and put those claws into that corner. The metal blade of the tray square is gonna poke up. So you wanna push it down with your thumb. So I'm pulling with my fingers, pushing with my thumb. And then as the adult, you can help move it over till that lines up, till the edge of the blade lines up with the dot across the wood. So I'm pulling with my fingers, pushing with my thumb. A lot of times the wood wants to move around on the kid and that makes it really frustrating. So another thing you can do as an adult is just hold the wood steady while they get that feeling for pulling and pushing. Sometimes it's helpful to have your hand on top as well if you're the adult. But I really recommend that you get to the point quickly where the child is holding the tri-square completely on their own. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get the sense of pulling and pushing. It feels like somebody else is doing the work for you and you don't get that feeling. So I'm pulling, pushing. Now I put the pencil next to the blade on the tray square and draw it across the wood. If you want more information about measuring tools, I have a video specific to that on my website. It's going to be important to have a suitable work surface to make this project. This workbench is ideal and you can see variations on this bench on my website. I've got a link just to making a work surface. There's lots of ways to come up with something like this if you don't have something like it already. So I'll be using this workbench to make our sailboat. Our next step is to saw this line. So I'm going to clamp it onto this bench using the C-clamp and clamping block. Some tips, and again, there's a whole another video I've got that shows you more detail. I make the line about two fingers off the end of the bench. So I scoot the line over, I'll hold the wood in place, and if you're the adult helping the child, just do this part, and they can do the rest. For the kid, I put a clamping block here. This is why I call it a sandwich. I have one piece of bread, my piece of cheese, my other piece of bread. I will hold it all together with a C-clamp. Oh, the C-clamp isn't open far enough. So I will need to undo it. The opposite way of the clock, the opposite way that the clock goes. And then I'll put the C-clamp around it. And now it's the right size. With the adult holding here, it's really easy to keep the wood from plopping around. But if you don't want to have the adult hold on to it, you can just push down with the C-clamp while you tighten it. So I'm holding the wood in place by pushing on the C-clamp while I go the way the clock goes this time, clockwise, to make it tight. Some things to pay attention to. Like I said, the line needs to be about two fingers off the end of the bench. Further than that, it starts to wiggle around. Closer than that, closer than that I start to risk cutting the bench. The C-clamp, you'll notice, is also out of the way. If the C-clamp is like this, it's going to get in the way. And if I touch the C-clamp with the saw, it really messes up how sharp the saw is. So make sure the C-clamp is out of the way. I make sure it's actually bumping up against this bracket on this particular bench. And I want to kind of center it as well, make it look nice and it holds it, holds it sturdier. So center the C-clamp over the wood as much as possible and then make it as tight as you can, okay? And for the adults, you might want to give it a test. Make sure that it's tight enough, okay? Um, so check it, both of you. Make sure that line's in the right place. C-clamp's out of the way. C-clamp's nice and tight. And now we're ready to saw. If you've never used a handsaw before with a child, I really recommend that you take the time to examine it. Okay, I'm gonna carefully slide off the cover. And it's important to understand how sharp it is and how important that is. So when I'm teaching kids in my workshop, I hold the saw for them while they use their fingertips just to touch the teeth. Not to push, definitely not to go back and forth. Just to touch the teeth and feel that pricking sensation that tells you that the teeth are sharp. Make sure that they do it carefully. You don't want anybody to get cut. It's very important though to get a sense of the power of this tool by checking its sharpness. The first thing to do with sawing is figure out where to stand. I'm going to want to be very careful of the hand that is not holding the saw. I want to make sure that I can hide this hand. You'll hear me say that a lot. 
hide your hand. If I'm standing here and I'm right-handed, I'm holding the saw like this, there's nowhere for me to hide the hand. I can't put it anywhere safe. I could go like this, but that won't work. I can't saw that way. So I will need to step over to the other side of the bench. Now I can put the saw here and I can hide my hand over here and it's safe. The C-clamp is between the saw and my hand. So if you're right-handed, you need to stand on this side. If you are left-handed, then stand on this side. I'm standing on the correct side of the bench. I've got my hand hidden. I'm ready to get started. I start by going to the part of the blade that is closest to the handle where I have the most control and I position it up against the line like this. And then I pull backwards to make a small cut that will guide the saw into the where, places that I want it to go. If you're the adult helping the child, this is the hardest part, getting started. So I recommend you do this. Don't do it for the child, do it together. So what I do is first I ask the child if I have their permission to step around them. I'll put my hand next to theirs. I'll come around and they're holding onto the saw. You have to pretend that this is their hand. I'll put my hand over their hand like this. Careful not to crush their hand in the handle, but kind of wrapping it around, putting my fingers on this part so that we can guide the saw together. And then I can get a sense of when they're getting the hang of it, I can just take my hand away. So you can imagine if I'm a kid that there's an adult hand on the other side of my hand helping me guide the saw. Now I pull backwards three times. And I blow away the sawdust so I can see the line. You always want to be looking at the line as you're sawing. So I push down like this. I push it at about an angle like that. Okay, I don't want to go straight up and down or flat. I want it to be at about a 45 degree angle. I push down, looking only at where the saw and the line meet. I blow away the sawdust always from the side. If I blow straight down, the sawdust can come back and get into my eyes. And I try and keep the saw very straight. If I bend the saw, it will not work. It just won't go anywhere. And that is a very frustrating thing for kids learning how to use a saw. So if you're the adult helping the child, again, use that position of wrapping your hand around theirs and just hold the saw straight. Try not to push on it, just keep it straight. And if you're the kid, try and get your body so that it's behind the saw. It gets bent when you're off to the side. Don't be afraid of that saw. Get right up close and comfortable with it so you can push down. It's helpful sometimes to have one foot under the bench and the other foot behind you a little bit as you position your body behind the saw. The saw like this, I'm blowing away the sawdust. Now, sometimes this will happen. You can see I'm on my line here, but sometimes that happens and you get off the line. If that happens, you can steer a cross cut saw like this by twisting it. And this is something to do adults and children together. We'll go back to where the saw was on the line and we'll twist it and get it to continue the way we want it to go on that line. I'm gonna saw the rest of the way. What you'll find, adults, is that you help a little bit, and then the kid does a bit, and then they get tired. And then it's helpful to step in if they're small. Older kids, they get the hang of this pretty quickly. But if you're, if there's a child, if you're a child of five or six years old, this can be hard work, particularly because you're not as tall as the adults around you. And so your height is, at the wrong, you're at the wrong height to do it too easily. So help out as necessary, adults, just don't help out too much. And I'm gonna saw the rest of the way. As I get to the end, I want to go very gently. Otherwise, I risk breaking off the piece and I'll end up with a great big shard of wood. To do that, I want to go super gently, again, holding that blade very, very straight. I'm hardly pushing at all. You can hear it changing. Now I'm done. With the hull of our boat now cut, we are ready to make the bow. 
So choose what end of the wood you want to be the bow. Here's where I made that mistake and I went off the line and this end looked pretty nice. So I'm gonna make that the stern and I'm gonna cut off this part that has this funny miscut when I cut the bow. So if you're an adult doing this with a kid, I find it's really helpful if you help hold the ruler in place. We're gonna measure across the front of the boat. Okay, the bow. And since it's three and a half inches long, halfway is one and three quarters. Um, doing that math with older kids is really tricky. So uh, more power to you if you wanna do the math, but I'm gonna make a mark right there at one and three quarters. That is the center. So that's gonna be the very point of the bow. Now I'll turn the boat. I'm gonna measure down the side two inches. So I match it up again. I put the ruler so I can make a mark right at the edge of the wood at two inches. I'm gonna do the same on the other side of the wood. To do that part, I'm gonna hold the ruler next to the boat because if I hold it here, I can't make a mark at the edge of the wood. So I'll put it next to the boat. That's again a tricky part where it's helpful for the adult to hold the ruler. And I'll make a mark at two inches like that. So I've got one and three quarters for the middle of the front and then two inches down each side. Now I'll use the ruler and I'll connect these. And again, if, if the child you're working with can match this up easily, more power to you, do it. And if you're the kid doing this, I really recommend pushing really hard on that ruler once you have matched up those dots because the ruler likes to move around when you draw the line with a pencil. And we'll do the same on the other side where I match up the dots, I push down really hard, connect those dots. When we cut the bow of the boat, it's a great time to talk about parallel lines. If I think only about positioning the wood without thinking about the lines on the bench, like I did the last time for cutting straight across the wood, I'm gonna have a really big problem trying to cut these lines. The bench will get in the way or I might even saw the bench. So think about parallel, two lines that go next to each other without touching. Here's one line. I'm going to take this line and make it parallel to the end of the bench. So that line is parallel to the end of the bench. And then I can do that two finger thing again. I can't cut this line, but I can cut this one. Once this one's cut, then I'll turn the boat and cut the other line. So it's really two sandwiches that we're making. Let me quickly put this together. I might need to slide the boat around to position it so I get a good grip with the C-clamp. That line is about two fingers, it's parallel, C-clamp is out of the way, and we'll make it as tight as we can. Then we're ready to saw. Getting started when you're coming in at an angle is really tricky. So I recommend you work together on this one. Hide that hand, make sure it's well hidden, hold the saw together, get yourself positioned properly so you're behind the saw. And then you wanna kind of push in with the saw right on that line and pull back. So you get that first cut in just the right place. It is really tricky to learn how to do that. I make it look easy because I've been doing this for too long. But with practice, you can get the hang of it. So do it together. We'll pull back that third time, blow away the sawdust, and now saw like we did before. Now, I will turn the boat so I can do the other side. I actually find it's easier if I move the C-clamp around to the other side of the bench too. That way, everything positions much more easily. So that line is about two fingers off the end. It's parallel to the end of the bench. I'll make the C-clamp nice and tight. And now we're ready to, do, ready to do the next side of the bow. There we go, the bow is cut, we're ready to shape it. Before I do any shaping, I wanna give you a safety tip. These little pieces of wood on the floor are like ice skates. So pick them up as they accumulate. The last thing you wanna do is step on one of those and end up sitting on the floor. Now that we have the bow of the boat cut, 
We want to shape it so it's nicely rounded and moves through the water smoothly. To do that, we're going to use this tool here. It's called a Shinto rasp. Like I said earlier, like I said, I, I like to call it the alligator. It has two sides, one side with large teeth, one side with small teeth. We'll start with the big teeth to shape it, and then we'll smooth that shaping with the small teeth. You'll see there's tape on the end. That's because to use this tool safely, you must hold it with two hands. You hold it on the end and here, or with both hands on the handle. If you hold it with one hand, this hand invariably ends up on your project and you run the risk of alligator in your hand, which is not pleasant. So we'll make our sandwich to do the bow. We'll decide which is the bottom. Hmm, they look pretty good to me. I'm gonna say that this is the bottom. And then instead of making the C-clamp like this, where the handle will get in my way, I'm going to turn it upside down. I'll make an upside down sandwich like this. I'll put the boat as far as I can off the bench so it's secure, so that the C-clamp does not get in my way. Nice and tight C-clamps out of the way. There's the big teeth, I haven't got that. I'll hold on with both hands, and then I push down as I move across. So down and across, down and across, like this. Again, I brush the sawdust away or I blow from the side. I've made a bit of a bevel here. It's not rounded yet. To make it rounded, I need to change the angle of the alligator as I go down and across. It's a lot to coordinate, but it's actually quite simple once you get the hang of it, and it doesn't take long to do that. So I'll go like this. And then like this. You'll notice that I'm above my work. Sometimes, Kids get confused. I'll find them sitting on the floor trying to do this. It's very important. You sit on the bench, kind of like you're riding a bicycle and you're leaning over the work. So you're letting gravity help you push. If you're the adult helping the child, again, you can hold it with them, hands over theirs, or I find it helpful to be in front of them and I'll hold like this with them. So they're holding, sitting on the bench right here, and I'm going like this with them until they get the hang of it. And then I'm out of the picture. It's very important to give them plenty of time to get their own experience with the tool. So doing this side, that was pretty easy. Doing the other side is trickier because I'm not like left-handed. If you can use both hands and go like this, that's golden, but most people can't. So this is going to be difficult. I find it's easier for the child to stand up and go like that. The bench does like to move around. So putting a knee on the bench can help if the child is big enough. If they aren't, the adult can sit on the bench and just keep it from moving around. It seems funny to see that the most help you could give would be to sit on the bench, but it certainly is the case. Just sit on that bench. So well. There that one's moved around. Sorry about that on the ears. I'll put my knee on it. I'm going to have it shaped. There, that's about even. Almost. Now I'll turn it over and use the small teeth. And just give a few passes to smooth it out. And now, we're ready to sand this. For sanding, nothing beats a sanding block, and they are so simple to make. This is just a four and a half inch piece of one by four with a quarter sheet of sandpaper tacked to it in this case, or stapled to it in this case. It works so well to have a solid surface to sand, on, sand from. So, now we're ready to sand. I'm leaving it clamped up to do the bow. Why not? And I push as I rub. It seems simple to sand, but some instruction really helps if you've never sanded before. So if you're a kid sanding, push. It takes some work to do this. Get over the wood, push and rub and push and rub and push and rub, and then feel it. Oh, is it smooth enough? 
Oh, that feels pretty smooth. I'm ready to move on to the next part. So I can push the rod right over here. It should make some nice, fine sawdust. Feel it with your fingertip. Your fingertips never lie. Your eyes will deceive you. But when you're sanding, feel it. If you feel any roughness or sharpness, that's where you need to sand. So you want to sand and sand and sand until you don't feel any roughness or sharpness anywhere on the hull of the boat. I'm not going to bore you by having you watch me sand the whole thing. I'll see you on the other side when I'm done sanding mine. I think that I am done sanding the hull of the boat. Let's check it by using my fingertips. So I feel it everywhere. Oh, it feels rounded. It feels smooth. No sharpness, not even on the very point of the bow. I'll go down the sides. Sometimes it helps to close your eyes to do this job. Well, it feels pretty good there. Feels pretty good there. Yep, I've made the whole tour of the boat. I'm not feeling any roughness or sharpness. I'm ready to do the next part, which is to drill a hole for the mast. The mast wants to be placed centered in the boat on about this line from one corner to the other of the bow. I find it best to use a ruler for this. Match it up. We know it's one and three quarters to the middle of the boat since it's three and a half inches wide. So we can go like this and put our dot right there. And that should be right where we want the mast to be. Now that we've made the dot where we're going to drill our hole, we need to make a sandwich before we drill the hole. We need to hold the hull of the boat steady on the bench. Make sure the dot is off the end of the bench. Otherwise, you'll drill a hole in the bench. And I don't think you want to do that. I don't want you to do that. We'll use a C-clamp and a clamping block to make our sandwich. And you'll notice the handle is down. If the handle is up, it interferes with the drill. So handle down, an upside down sandwich. Like this, make it nice and tight. And to drill our hole, we're going to use a hand drill, or sometimes it's called an egg beater drill. Let's talk names first. This is the handle, the crank, the chuck, and the bit. The bit is the business end. It's the part that drills the hole. In order for the bit to go around the right direction, the crank has to go around the right direction. It goes the same way the clock goes. If it goes the other way, this still goes around, but you won't drill a hole. So I've watched kids try and drill holes by going backwards with the crank. And uh, it's amusing. So remember, turn it clockwise. So we'll put the bit right onto that dot. I'm gonna stand up for this. And I hold on to the handle and the crank. If you're the adult helping the child, just put your hand on top of the handle to hold it steady if they need that kind of help. Try not to turn the crank for them. It can be hard work to do this. And if it gets really hard, I'll show you some techniques as we drill our hole. But try and let them do that work all on their own. And if you're the kid, just be patient. You'll get this thing done. It is tricky to know what straight is. I can see straight this way for me, but I have a hard time seeing it in this plane. So if you're the adult sitting on the bench, holds the bench steady and gets you positioned 90 degrees from the child so you can hold on to the drill and help keep it going straight this direction. So, we're ready to drill our hole. Let's see, I gotta remember to go clockwise, I'm holding onto the handle, turning the crank, and I go like this. I'll know I'm drilling a hole when I make sawdust. If I go backwards, it won't make much sawdust. So I go like this, going around, it gets a bit sticky. I'm making sure I'm going in straight. If it gets too hard, you can go back and forth like this and push. It's easier to push than to pull. So just do the push part. Up, oh, I'm all the way through. I'll keep going until the drill goes easy. Up, oh, it came loose. Sometimes that happens. If that happens, just put the chuck on it and try and tighten it up again. There's a technique to that, but you can do it. And now I'll keep going until it goes nice and easy in that hole. Now, when I pull the drill out, I need to be very careful to pull straight up. If I bend the drill one way or the other, I can bend the drill bit, 
which renders it useless. The drill bit needs to be very, very straight. So if it doesn't come out easily, that means you're probably pulling it one way or the other in the hole. So I'm gonna go like this, make sure it's nice and loose and pull straight up. With the hull completed, it is time to make the cabin. The cabin is two inches long. So we'll take a piece of one by two, match up the ruler so it feels like one piece of wood. Use that finger. Remember, your fingers never lie. And pencil next to the two inch mark this time, push and twist, put a circle around it. Now, I get another chance at using the tri square. I'll pull it up against the wood. Up, oh, you know, there's not very much wood on this end. So I'll turn it around. And now I can curl my fingers into that corner, thumb on the metal, pull with my fingers, push with my thumb, draw the line. There we are. This time we won't use the crosscut saw. We'll use a different type of saw. When we are cutting small pieces of wood like this one by two or round pieces of wood like this dowel, the miter box and the back saw are the best tools for the job. They can hold a small piece of wood in place much easier than trying to clamp it onto a bench. When I use the miter box, I want to protect the surface that it's attached to. So I actually use a piece of scrap wood like this scrap cabinet door, it's made of plywood. I've attached the miter box to it and then I've clamped the whole operation onto a tabletop. So now I'm gonna saw this line I match it up in the miter box so it lines up with the line that goes straight across. I'm gonna hold it with my thumb. Then I put the saw in like this. Now, most kids find it very difficult to hold the wood in place with their thumb. You're going to need to help them hold it in place. And really all you need to do is hold behind their hand just to keep the wood from moving around. They can do the sawing almost entirely on their own because the saw is guided by the slot. There's no need to pull backwards three times like with the crosscut saw. Just start sawing back and forth and saw flat. What will make it easy is holding it firmly in the miter box. If you have a large spring clamp or something like that, that works really well too. But if you don't, just hold it with the child so that the wood doesn't move on them. And then they go back and forth. There, I'm all the way done. I take out both pieces of wood. You'll notice this is a pretty beat up miter box. It's been used for years by my students. And you know, for the projects that we're making, it's okay that it's beat up. As they saw all the way through the box, I usually just cut another slot until we're all the way done with the miter box. Before attaching the cabin to the boat, we need to sand it. But we don't need to sand it everywhere because the bottom is not going to be exposed. So decide which part is the bottom. Is that the bottom or that the bottom? We're gonna make that the bottom. I'll put my name on the bottom so that it's easily identified. I'm not going to sand any of these edges. I'm only going to sand the top and the sides. Let me show you a trick for sanding little pieces of wood like this. You can hold the wood in one hand and sand it like that. But with a little tiny piece of wood, it's very likely you'll sand your thumb or your fingers. An easier method for sanding little pieces of wood is to put the sanding block down on a solid surface, hold it in place, and then rub the block of wood that you want to sand. In this case, this is the cabin for my boat. My name is there. I'm gonna make my cabin upside down. I only wanna sand the top, remember? Like that, and then I can sand like this. And again, I wanna make it all rounded and smooth. I won't bore you by having you watch me the whole thing. We'll see you on the other side. Here we are, all sanded. I've given it the finger check. Everything is smooth and round, except for the bottom, which I've left sharp. And now it's time to use the hammer and a couple of nails and attach the cabin to the sailboat. It might seem like hammering nails does not need any instruction, but I know too many people who have damaged their fingers with a hammer, so I wanna give you a few tips. 
Remember that phrase I used with sawing and using the alligator, hide your hand. That is the key phrase. The longer you hold on to the nail or keep your fingers close to where the hammer is striking, the greater the risk that you'll have of hammering your fingers. So here's how we do it to minimize the risk. I use a piece of scrap wood, I call it a nailing board, to start the nails. Got my cabin there. I've drilled a couple of tiny holes the same size as the nail to make it easier to get through the wood without cracking it. I'll take a nail, I'll put it on that hole like this. I'll take the hammer. I'm holding the hammer in a specific position where it gets fat right here. If I hold it way back here, I get a bigger swing, but I have less control. If I hold it way up here, I have lots of control, but I don't have much of a swing. Right in the middle, most hammers are well balanced for that. So where it gets fat, that's where I'm gonna hold on to it. And then I'm going to just tap the nail once. It stands on its own, you can see that. With it standing on its own, I no longer need to hold the nail. So I can just hold the wood off to the side farther away from where the hammer is striking. The further away my fingers, the less of a chance I will hit my fingers with a hammer. Now I'll tap down until this nail is poking out the bottom of the wood. It's just poking out. Now I'll do the other nail. Same drill. I'll put it on the hole, tap it once. I don't need to hold it any longer. If I keep holding it, I run the risk of hammering my fingers. If I hold on here, well, they're still pretty close. But if I hold on at the other end, they're further away. That's what I'll do. I'll tap down until they are started. And now I am ready to put them onto my boat. A common error that kids make when they're assembling a boat is to put the cabin on the bottom. Remember, the bottom of the boat, you round it with the alligator so that it goes through the water smoothly. So the cabin needs to be on the side that isn't rounded, that has the less rounded curves on the bow. The cabin, I like to center the cabin a little bit towards the mast, not all the way at the back, but you know, you can put the cabin anywhere you want. It'll be okay. So I'll put it right where I want it to be. I'll push down a little bit. Those nails that were poking out just a little bit, grab hold of the wood and they keep it from moving around too much. Clearly, it can still move around. Then I'll tap it once on each nail. Hey, they're being held in place. I don't need to hold onto this block of wood so much. I can hold onto the boat and I'm hammering straight down. You want to be hammering with the middle of the hammer. If you hammer with the edges, you run the risk of bending the nail. If you bend the nail, then you can just tap it back up. Here, I'll show you on the other nail. That one's in all the way. Ooh, I can feel it with my finger. If I can feel a kind of a divot, that means that nail's in all the way. If I can feel the top of the nail, then I need to hammer it some more. If you bend the nail like that or like that, don't keep hitting it or it will get more bent. Just turn the boat off to the side and you can tap it back up until it's straighter. So if you bend it, tap it back up. Don't keep hammering a bent nail. Never hammer a bent nail twice. Now I'll hide my fingers again. Feel it, oh, it's still poking up. Oh, it's still poking up a little bit. Ah, now it's in all the way. Just a few more things before we move on. You couldn't see this from the other angle. I was on the floor. It's important to do the nailing where you can be above the work. If I'm trying to nail on a table, especially as a little kid, it gets really hard to get the hammer in the right position. So I'm kneeling on the floor so I can be above the boat that I'm nailing on. I'm keeping my elbow free. Sometimes kids get caught in a position like this or they try and do it cross-legged. Up on the knees, kids so you can be above it and you can use gravity to help you hammer with. And now we're ready to make the mast. It's about five and a half inches long. We'll take our quarter inch dowel, match up the ruler, 
and make a little mark. You can't make a dot on a dowel. I make a little line like this. And we'll cut this in the miter box. Pinch it into the miter box. If you're, if you're the adult, it really helps to pinch it along with the child because dowels like to do this. They turn into little wheels. So, really important to pinch it tightly. We've got our line matched up with the slot. Doesn't take many strokes to cut a dowel. Because the dowel goes into the wood, I don't need to sand both ends of it, just the top. I'll use that same technique as I used on the small cabin where I hold the sanding block stationary and I can just rub the end of the dowel on the sanding block until it gets nice and rounded. All right, there we go. Now we're ready to glue it in place. Whenever you're gluing into a hole, it's really helpful to have a paper towel underneath because the glue is gonna come out the bottom. I'll put a little bit of glue into this hole. We're just using uh, carpenter's glue. White glue would do a job just as well. Let's squeeze it out there. A bit of glue in the hole. Remember, the sanded end is the top. The unsanded goes into the boat. I'll go like this. I'll take the hammer. We'll tap it in. Only hold it once. And then hide our hand. Check and see if that came out the bottom. There it did. It came out the bottom. We'll wipe off that glue. And the mast is in the boat. Let's put on the sail. I've cut the sail just from a piece of regular cloth. It's about four inches square and I have folded it in half and cut a little slot on top and bottom. Now I can slip that hole over the mast and then the other one over the top. And we have our sailboat. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have enjoyed being your teacher and I hope you have a very good time making a sailboat together. If you'd like more information about using tools or making other projects or want to see some photos of other projects that I've made with children, check out my website. The address is right here. It's on wordpress.com. And on that website, you will find links to my other videos. And when you go see those videos, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. It helps other people to find it. So have fun. Send me your questions. There's a link through the contact page on my, uh, on my website. And uh, see you next time.